Sending notifications from Home Assistant to your phone is more powerful than you think. Did you know that you can open up an app on your phone from Home Assistant? How cool would it be to turn up to Costa, open your phone up, and it's already opened the app for you, ready to use for your loyalty points? Or did you know that you can control music playing on your phone from Home Assistant? This would be great if you had a party. You could set up a Home Assistant dashboard whereby people could skip tracks without having access to your phone. Well, let's take a look at these automations now and a few of the cool automations as well. If you use the Home Assistant companion app on your phone, the notifications can be much more than notifications. You can send special notifications, which instead of acting as a notification, actually perform actions on your phone. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to open an app on your phone using Home Assistant. I think there'll be some really good use cases for this, so leave something in the comments below if you've got some good ideas. Perhaps your children have a specific app that they have to do their homework with on their tablets. Well, you could set up an automation to interrupt their Roblox gaming session each evening and open up their homework app instead. Ah, oh, mom. You need to go to Developer Tools and then Services and then search for Notifications. You can then select the Android device that you want the app to open on. So in my case, this is Mobile App Mark Phone. And then for the Message field, you want to put Command Launch App. And then under the Data field, you want to put Package Name, followed by the unique Google Play Store ID. To find out this ID, you need to go to the Play Store on a web browser, and then you can take this ID out of the URL. In my example, it's the UK version of the Costa app. Press Call Service, and that's it. The app should open on your phone. The way you could do this is that you could set up location zones in Home Assistant, and then when you enter that location, it triggers the automation to open the app. Do you ever have so many notifications on your phone that you don't read them all? Well, for important notifications, you could actually set up it instead to be text-to-speech. No, no, you have a water leak at home. So that it actually reads out the notification from your phone for you. To do this, you simply need to use the same notification service as before. And for the message, you need to put TTS. And then under the data section, put TTS underscore text, followed by the message. You can also specify which volume to use on your phone. So you could use the alarm volume instead of your media volume. This would be really good if you have your media volume on quiet, and then it would ensure that the text-to-speech message would still work correctly. This functionality is unfortunately only available on Android. I suspect Apple locked things down too much to do this. On Android, it's also worth noting that the notifications don't always come through immediately. I think Android's efforts to try and save on battery power means that they don't always come through straight away. I'm now going to show you how you can pause media on your phone from Home Assistant. I believe this works for any media app. I've tried it with YouTube and it seems to work great. I tried it with my phone screen off and locked and it still paused the music. In this video, we're going to talk about Home Assistant automations. In this video, I'm going to give you five quick tips about as I mentioned earlier, I think this would be good in a party situation, but I can think of other good uses as well. For example, when the doorbell rings, you could maybe get it to pause your music. Someone is at the door. There is a sensor that's sent from your phone to Home Assistant called Music Active, and you could use this to determine if music is playing on your phone or not. Unfortunately, by default, the sensor only sends information every 15 minutes, so you might need to play with some other settings to increase this frequency. There is a setting called Sensor Update Frequency, which you could consider reducing. To do this, you want to send a notification like this. In this example, I've got it pausing music, but you can also get it to play, pause and skip tracks as well. It's a shame that you have to tell it which app to pause the music on because you might not know which app is actually playing the music on your phone. But if you use the same app all the time like Spotify, then at least you could just hard code this in and it should work fine. The next feature is one I use regularly, and that's the ability to change the ringer mode on my phone from Home Assistant. I've got a button on my Stream Deck which talks to Home Assistant using a Home Assistant plugin. And when I press this button, it turns on recording mode. This recording mode sets some lights to red, sends a notification to my partner's phone, and also sets my ringer mode to silent on my phone. Mark. That's if I remember to turn it on, of course. You can either change your ringer mode between normal, silent or ringer, or you can set your phone to do not disturb. With do not disturb, you've got a few options there as well. You can get it so that you're totally not disturbed, or you can have some exceptions so that some contacts can still ring you or alarms can still go off. For recording mode, I want it so that I get no interruptions. 
As you probably already know, the Home Assistant companion app on your phone allows you to send location information from your phone to Home Assistant. This is great for triggering automations based on locations. However, GPS is quite battery intensive, and so by default, these updates aren't sent very often to Home Assistant. But there is a mode called High Accuracy Mode, whereby you can send these updates more often, and you can set how often these updates are sent. The high accuracy mode has some nice settings whereby you can get it to enable automatically when you're in a certain zone. Or you can even set it so that if a certain Bluetooth device is connected to your phone, then it'll enable automatically as well. Or another way of doing it, which I want to talk about here, is you can enable it remotely using a notification. This could be really useful, say if you've got a family member that you can't get in contact with and you're worried about them, then you could enable this mode and see if they're moving or stationary. As with most of these sensors, you could consider them as creepy or you could consider them as useful. In our household, we consider them as useful because it makes our life easier. But if you're tracking your children's location with their phone, then they might think differently. This is the command you need to use to set high accuracy mode remotely. You can also define how frequent the updates are. If someone's got a low battery, then I'd recommend not setting it too low. You can maybe use the battery sensor to see how flat their battery is and use that to determine how frequent the updates are. Now the next one is a simple one. This is a command that you can send to the Home Assistant companion app so that it sends all sensor information since the last update. This is really good for sensors that only update every 15 minutes. You could use this to force an update for these sensors. Now let's talk about how notifications work for a second. By default, they go through the Apple or Google servers, but there is also a setting whereby you can get it to send it directly from Home Assistant to your phone. To do this, you want to go into the settings in the companion app and then you need to enable persistent connection. You need to go to settings, companion app, servers and devices, and persistent connection. There's a few options to choose from in there for when it uses direct connection versus going through the servers. And the final thing I want to talk about opens up almost an infinite amount of phone automations. And this is the ability to send broadcast intents from Home Assistant to your phone. What intents are, are there pieces of data that are sent from one app on your phone to another app on your phone. This means that apps that have been designed to receive intents can process that data and do something with it. I use the app called Tasker on my phone and it's great for automating almost anything on your phone and it can also receive broadcast intents. So what you can do is, is you can set up an automation in Home Assistant which will send an intent and then Tasker will pick up that intent and run a Tasker profile. And Tasker profiles can do all sorts of things. For example, you can get it to create a timer or an alarm on your phone, or even get it to send an SMS message. I'll leave some links in the description to all the information on notifications so that you can have a look through it and see what you can do. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already and liking the video if you enjoyed it. And leave a comment down below with what you do with these automations. So thanks, until next time.